The Denver Nuggets and the Lakers face off in this year's first round of the NBA playoffs, and to say the least, this will be very entertaining. The Nuggets organization was sending shots at the Lakers saying this for an example. And then during some preseason interviews, AD had this to say. It was just a lot of like the talking and all the uh, Lakers. That, like, it was just so much of that going on. You know, I think, you know, me and Bron had some conversations like we can't wait. Fighting for this spot in the playoffs, the Lakers took care of business in the play-in game as LeBron showcased how he continues to defy the odds with his speed racing down the floor at the age of 39. And even when he wasn't affecting the game with his scoring, well, his passing to find the open man was amazing. The age hasn't slowed him down one bit as he's been willing this team this season and for Nikola Jokic, he never gets overheated as his computer mind continues to get the highest quality software updates. As he works as the head honcho operating Denver system, there's many great features as to what makes this unit so great. When you take that high level of Joker leading the Nuggets versus LeBron who has seen it all and done it all at his age leading the Lakers, this makes for an electrifying series in round one. For some key stats going into this series, LA and Denver matched up three times this season where Denver swept them beating LA three games to zero. And when you look at the numbers deeper, well for the most part, it favors Denver heavily. But the thing is, with a sample size of only three games, you can't just go strictly off the numbers as you have to actually watch the games to figure out what each team will succeed at doing and what they need to do more of. With Jokic, he's going to receive a lot of touches and with him being able to bully his way into the paint, it'll attract the attention of multiple LA defenders, so now he has the option to kick it to the corner, but with his soft touch, he can knock down a short jumper. When LA played Denver, they would have these times where AD is not on Jokic so he can roam around more, but the thing is, when Jokic has that advantage, he can start cooking and this is not what you want. So for the Lakers, it's best that they let AD cover Jokic straight up and only send double teams when the guy doubling is guarding a weaker shooter, so now this bucket in the paint is much harder for Jokic. The reason I say only leave your man if he's a weaker shooter, because one, if you're too focused, then you leave a 40% shooter wide open in the corner, but then two, when the double actually does come but leaves Gordon open on the backside, then Jokic can drop it right over the top for a Gordon slam. When you're dealing with Denver, they really don't have many unforced errors, so it's highly difficult to throw them off their game. When they put a shooter on the same wing they're running Murray to, this forces LeBron to stay out or give MPJ a wide open three. As Brown goes to the opposite corner, this makes D'Lo follow him out. So when Murray gets that opening off the screen, Gordon can put it right on the money for the bucket inside. With a roster constructed with all the right pieces, many guys can affect the game, so when Jokic catches at what I like to call his work desk, anytime there's a mismatch, it's dangerous for the defense, as Joker can get deeper in the paint off the back down, and now since the defense is sunk in, Jokic with his amazing passing can sling it out to MPJ for the three ball, but who are we kidding? This blended float into a lob is just a thing of beauty. And flips it up, oh what a pass, and Gordon throws it down, and a foul! That attention that Jokic commands really is the main reason this offense is so effective because when two defenders charge him off the pick and roll, it's nothing for Jokic to drop it off to Brown, but since LeBron tried helping Gover and gambling for the steal, it now leaves open a wide open MPJ, and what is it y'all? Straight cash. With a shooter like Michael Porter Jr., you should never leave him open because that'll give him the ultimate green light as even when you do smother him, his size will allow him to pull up smoothly over the top. With the Denver Nuggets having guys that specialize in many different things, not letting MPJ get these cross matches where he can shoot right over the top of the defense will be key. And since Aaron Gordon is a major threat when it comes to his inside scoring, as much as you might want to double here, you have to trust AD to handle it and AD himself has to get back faster because now with the defense all sunk in, it's bombs away from KCP uncovered. That rim threat of Gordon constantly makes the defense collapse on him, so it's best you stop him early or else this will be the result. Like I said, if the opportunity presents itself, I personally would let AD hold his own in the paint when Gordon attacks because with his size alone, he'll make it hard for Gordon to convert the bucket. The Lakers will run this campaign where they let Gordon shoot and more so keep it packed in the paint and this right here is a major key. Making Gordon knock down jumpers from the outside or making him create a look for himself is a plus for this Lakers defense as Gordon isn't the best at doing so. But say you let him get down here with a guy about his size on him, then with his muscle, he can bully his way to the hole for two points. 
For the Lakers, they're really going to have to play solid and honest defense because not only can these guys pick you apart individually with the mismatches, but when Murray gets these high pick and rolls, he can turn the corner with a quickness which makes the big have to step over to contain him. This now makes AD have to cover the rim, worry about his man, and even worry about Jokic as well. But with him not committing to anything all the way, Murray can now place his high off the glass for the bucket. These high pick and rolls can all out be deadly because with Murray being able to get downhill quick and the Lakers rolling out these lineups with only one rim protector, once that rim protector is out the paint, it's gonna force other guys to help which makes them forget about their man. And hey, what did I just say about giving MPJ open looks? It's not just the rim protection aspect though, because with Murray being able to create looks for himself and knock down shots, the defense will send two at him to get the ball out of his hands. But like I said, the Nuggets have a player for every skill set, and now one of their snipers in KCP is wide open. There's honestly many ways this offense can dissect your defense, such as isolation from Jamal Murray, pick and roll with Jokic, and even with their ball movement on the floor. But just because their offense looks flawless doesn't mean that they're just going to run through the Lakers because the Lakers did find some success in some areas as well. With them playing at a faster pace than Denver, they're going to want to take advantage of any time they can get on the break and go score the ball. With the strength and speed of James, he's able to muscle off Brown while cradling the ball to avoid the steal, and when met with the contest from Watson, LeBron goes back to that left hand to lay it home. When you're able to put the defense on their heels since they don't get back quick enough, it's a major advantage when it comes to scoring the ball, but what's even better is when you have a non-shot blocker in front of you, it just makes things a little easier. When LeBron starts up that engine to push downhill when seeing his target, not only does Jokic pose no threat, he doesn't even try to bother James when he goes in. If you pay attention, you'll see this a lot with Jokic, and the Lakers can target him a lot by attacking him during his time on the floor. If you see here, Jokic is camping in that paint, so when Reeves sees this, it's like he sees food at the barbecue and slips right by him when coming off the screen to make his way straight to the grill. When you put Jokic in these situations where he has to split the ground between guarding AD and helping on the pick and roll ball handler, it's tough for him to cover either one, so guys can get two feet in the paint at any moment. Some of you may think I'm picking on Jokic or playing around, but I'm being serious, and the only people picking on Jokic is the LA roster. When Reeves gets this screen, he doesn't go around it because then he'd have to potentially go through the help of Murray and Gordon on the back side, but by going towards his left side, he only has to be Holiday if he decides to help, and with Jokic in the paint, well AR will take his chances. In these games during the Jokic minutes, this game plan was huge, because not only is he too slow to contain ball handlers off the drive, but this makes the backside help after cover two players, and now this lob to AD is easy money. The results may not always be instant, but when Jokic is in that pick and roll with AD, Davis can get to the paint with ease, which makes Holiday shift over, so now when the pass is zipped to the corner, Jokic now has to help out since Holiday was forced to close out hard, and now AD is left open for the bucket inside. To simply put it, when LA involves Jokic in that pick and roll and force him to make decisions quickly on the defensive end, this is a major W for them. Sure, the Nuggets have success in chasing over the top of the screen to then funnel players into Jokic, but when you can put Jokic in the pick and roll, it gives the Lakers a great advantage when attacking down low to get a bucket or if they need to get an open look from deep. Now we all know Jokic can't always be in the game, so the Lakers will have to take full advantage of the non-Jokic minutes as much as they can. When the Nuggets send Jokic to the bench, you'll see these lineups where LeBron can play the three with two other bigs on the floor and this causes a ton of problems. When getting this high screen, LeBron can now get the switch onto Jordan, but since Watson fights over and Jordan is hedging hard, this allows for Hayes to go straight to the paint uncovered, and now it's up to Brown to cover Hayes coming inside, and it's an easy two points. Having two bigs share the floor with LeBron helps when the Nuggets only have one traditional big man in, because mismatches like this come about where Prince has Jordan on the ISO, and now getting to the bucket is easy money. Although LeBron is playing the four right here, Denver has their small lineup in, so with their only big guard and Christian Wood on the outside, there's no rim protection down low, so when James rolls to the basket off this screen, there's literally no stopping him as he goes into Dunkey. These what I like to call smaller ball lineups when Jokic is off the floor, and these lineups where the Lakers have multiple big men out there are golden opportunities to get easy shots at the rim and just on the floor in general. And since a lot of attention will be centered at LeBron James, it'll open up these looks from deep if the defense gets too far in help position. With the Nuggets playing very poised and fundamentally sound, it's going to take a lot from the Lakers to take them down in 7 games as they're going to need an aggressive AD who can pull Jokic out the paint and take him off the dribble to score, a King James who pretty much controls the game, and they're also going to need other guys to step up and knock down shots. On the flip side, with a focused and determined Lakers squad, the Nuggets aren't going to be able to breeze through them as they're going to have to execute to perfection because when you have a hungry squad who is spinning a block to get their get back, anything is possible in this situation and will make for a highly entertaining first round series.